Um, so let, I mean, we'll just jump into it. I know everyone's kind of busy here. Um, so thanks for joining everybody. This is the, we're just going to talk about the FinTwig conference for the next 30 minutes or so. Uh, this is Jonah, obviously. I brought on some of our speakers. Uh, most of them are probably still putting their presentations together, but uh, I asked them to come on and just talk for a few minutes and give a quick overview of what that presentation at the conference is going to look like. Uh, for anyone that isn't familiar, we're hosting the FinTwig conference 2.0. So this is the follow-up conference to the one that we did in October in Orlando. This next one is going to be in Vegas at Aria, which is a really nice hotel right on the Strip. We're doing it May 13th, which is a Friday, and Saturday, May 14th. We're recommending that a lot of people fly in that Thursday night because we're starting early on Friday. We're going to go all day Friday, all day Saturday. Uh, in terms of schedule-wise, we haven't posted the full schedule yet on the website which is fintwit2022.com. That's fintwit2022.com. We'll get the schedule up in the next probably couple weeks. Uh, we just have to confirm a few more speakers. A couple speakers had to back out because they can't fly out of Canada or they have some family commitments. Uh, someone's expecting a baby, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but we're going to start each morning at around 8.30 um, well, I shouldn't say that. Uh, Friday morning on the 13th, we'll start at about 8.30. That first half an hour will be like networking, coffee, pastries, that sort of thing. And then we'll kick off with three hours of presentations in two different rooms on two different stages, of course. Then we'll do a full sit-down lunch, three more hours of content in both rooms. And then we'll have a cocktail party Friday night from like 6 to 9, as well as the FinTwit Poker Tournament. Uh, and then Saturday morning, we're going to start off with breakfast. I think we're starting at 8 o'clock on Saturday. We'll do breakfast for the first hour. We'll start content at 9. Same thing. We'll go three hours of, of speakers in both rooms. We'll do lunch, and then we'll do three more hours of speakers. And then that's basically the end of the conference. So we'll probably wrap up at 4.30 or so on Saturday. And then Saturday night, of course, is wide open to do whatever you want to do. And then Sunday is also wide open. So... Uh, you know, markets are open on Monday, but if people want to stick around on Sunday, I'll be there probably, or I'll definitely be there on Sunday. Uh, hopefully we can go out to the pool area and, you know, relax and sip some cocktails for a few hours. So that's sort of the schedule. Uh, we have, I think, 16 or 17 sponsors confirmed. We're still looking for a few more sponsors. So if you're interested in sponsoring this conference, let me know. My DMs are open. Um, we have a few more speakers to announce before we put the schedule up, but Gab, I'll let you kind of run it from here since you're better at this than me. Well, it depends on what you want to hear from these speakers. I think we were just going to kind of give them each a few minutes to, you know, mention what they're looking forward to, what they're speaking about, uh, that type of stuff, if that works for you. Yeah, perfect. Awesome. Okay. Richard, would you like to go first? Kind of talk because you, uh, you were there last year, you spoke and you're a repeat now. Yeah, no pressure. I got to go first. So, uh, yeah. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, really excited to be coming back. And this year won't just be me. It will also be Ross Haber and Ray, um, the guys over at Trailer Line. And, and both of them are way more experienced than I am. So this is going to be a really awesome presentation. And basically, our topic is going to be advanced and early entries into stocks. Um, and primarily, we're, we're growth stock traders. We're focused on those, those high-flying names. And often, you want to look for an early spot where you can manage risk a little bit tighter than that true base breakout. So we'll be talking about that as well as a few different edges that uh, we, we've developed over there. Uh, Ross is more of a classic position trader, longer term focus a little bit. Uh, Ray is kind of a mix. He, he's, he's more of a swing trader, faster moving. So it'll be a really nice mix of a few different tactics uh, that they both use to manage positions and enter a little bit early. Um, and yeah, it should be a, a really great presentation. We're still building it, uh, but we're going to have a ton of examples um, to, kind of show you guys what we're looking for on different charts with consolidation pivots and different types of setups. So yeah, looking forward to it. Um, yeah, still building it. So I don't have too much to say about it, but should be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it'll be great to see everybody and get to meet people in person again, uh, hang out with Jake, um, Gav, all Jonah, all you guys. Um, it was a lot of fun last year and yeah, looking forward to it again. Love it. Richard, since we'll be in Vegas, will you be participating in any extracurricular activities? I, I'm awful at, at, at poker, you know, blackjack, all of those, but maybe I'll play a little bit, but uh, definitely not going a high roller on anything. <laughs> maybe I'll risk about 50 bucks. Who knows? 
All right, I love it. I love it. Which, what, if, if you have to pick a go-to game, which one? Which one are we seeing you at? Uh, I'll. I'll I like poker. Poker's poker's a lot of fun. I'm just awful at it, but uh, maybe I'll I'll practice uh, between now and then and try to get a little bit better. Perfect. Definitely looking forward to that. Very cool. And then, you know, Richard, um, I, I would say any any other just kind of like what. I, how, Right, best way to put this, what was your favorite part from last year that you're kind of like looking forward to, hey, you know, being in that type of environment and opportunity again? I think my favorite thing was getting to meet people in person um, who I've been chatting to like online uh, for quite a while. Um, Alpha Trends, uh, Brian Shannon, Jake. Uh, look, Brian just showed up. Uh, perfect. Um, uh, ben, Ben Bennett, Pattern Profits. It was great to hang out, meet people face to face and and. Yeah, just chat with them about about a bunch of stuff. That that was probably my favorite part, and, and getting to meet a lot of people who uh, found value in my videos. That was really meaningful, and um, yeah, just just the overall atmosphere. I mean, it was really nice. Just focus on education. Uh, a lot of different styles were represented as well. We've got Brian Feraldi with the more investing side of things, and uh, yeah, I loved to hear everybody's perspectives. Everybody's treating things a little bit different, but um, yeah, just so much to learn, and you can. Even if you're not an investor, there, there's portions of different people's talks that you can get something out of and, and apply to your own style. So, yeah, I think meeting people in person was my favorite thing and just the kind of wide variety of um, our presentations there. It was, it was a lot of fun. Very cool, Richard. Appreciate you being on here. Thanks, Richard. Awesome. All right. We have some new speakers as well this year. Uh, Ming, you're going to be, I think, a first time or two. Uh, FinTwit conference, at least as a speaker. So we'd love to hear from you as to what you're speaking about, what you're looking forward to and all that. And maybe a little bit of background if you can share. Yes, super excited to be coming this year. Um, so I'll be speaking about options. Uh, primarily, I've been, you know, I've been making some threads here on options. Um, super fascinating as a class, as I'm sure of you, a, a lot of you uh, may agree with me on that and uh, may even be interested in hearing a talk about options. So mostly I'll be going over, you know, very briefly, kind of like the, a, an intro on, you know, trading options, how I got into it, et cetera. Um, and then diving into more de depths about really like how kind of like how to trade options and not lose a ton of money. Um, so like how to size your positions, um, a little bit more about like the psychology of trading options, how to pair them it, as you know, hedging strategies into your wider portfolio of stocks and ETFs, et cetera, um, how to generate income from options given uh, in the broader context of your portfolio. So going over like covered call strategies and kind of some problems that exist with sizing around that and how we can possibly solve those um, spreads, et cetera. Um, so a bit about my background, I started out uh, trading for Steve Cohen at 0.72. Um, learned, honestly, I learned like 80% of what I know in finance from just that entry level job there. Um, I also spent some time on the trading floor at Citi. So Citi being, you know, one of the major bulge bracket banks having like, you know, rows and rows of, of desks trading various different asset classes. It was kind of like definitely um, uh, what's called uh, like learning by fire and uh, like getting a sense of really like how to trade all sorts of asset classes. Like going from like the like CLOs to correlation products to like exotic options to rate options, et cetera. Um, and that's kind of like where I first got my sense of um, what options are, how to trade them, what the risks are, um, how to hedge, how to, you know, what Greeks are, et cetera, how to draw ball, ball surfaces. Um, so really just kind of a, all about options and giving a little overview of my, my knowledge on options. Um, I'm going to try to make it a bit more interactive as well. So in addition to, um, you know, kind of learning via via like a presentation, also trying to like, uh, I'm trying to weave some games with the audience into into this talk. Very interesting. So how, how would you involve the audience? Uh, so like more on like, yeah, I, I'm thinking a bit more on like the, the psychology side and like, and on the leverage side involving like, you know, kind of real uh like if we were to play um you know kind of like betting games of some uh, in some sense that are like a microcosmic illustration of like a broader phenomenon that happens when you're trading real options something of that nature uh, i don't have like all of the details fleshed out yet okay very cool 
And how about yourself? We give you ten thousand dollars and you turn into twenty k. What's the game of choice? <laughs> oh well, I don't think I'll be betting ten thousand dollars, but um, probably several hundred or don't something. Don't worry, it's on Jonah. <laughs> well, if it's on Jonah, <laughs> then, uh, yeah, I think okay. um, blackjack definitely would be, uh, you know, my my go to game. Okay, awesome. I like blackjack too. That's probably my favorite. Um, so I'll I'll come sit at the table and you can tell me whether to you know pass or, or hit. It'll be good. <laughs> okay, so. awesome. Thank you so much me for for coming on and sharing with us. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, let's bring it back to another returner to the conference. Mr. Brian Shannon gave a very powerful uh, presentation last time. I loved it. You had the whole don't buy the dip situation turned out to be very uh, prescient, some would say, for the coming months. And we're excited to have you back. So walk us through what you know, you'll be presenting on, what you're looking forward to with this one. Yeah, thanks, Gav. Uh, you know, it was a it was a good it was a great event. I mean, you know, it was almost didn't happen because of covid in the hotels and i think jonah actually tried to cancel it and then the hotel wouldn't let him so that ended up being a fortunate event um because we got to have it happen and as richard said you know the highlight is of these things is always meeting the people that you see online um and and i enjoyed meeting you know getting to know you richard and and for me you know, I've been doing these types of events. Uh, shit, I mean, 20 years ago, I was doing the Traders Expo. Um, and, you know, the Traders Expo and the Money Show, uh, you know, 20 years later, it's still the same crowd. In other words, the same crowd, meaning the same demographic. It's all guys my age. <laughs> it's all white guys like me, my age. And uh, the... Um, you know, the, the demographic of this event in Orlando, you know, Richard, I think, is 25. Jake is 27. Um, you're 25, I think. Um, you know, the blonde... 23. So, you know, to me, it was exciting to hear and get to know all these young people who have access to so much more information. And it blows my mind. I was talking about, you know, I retweeted uh, Will Clemente today. The, the, you know, he's 19 years old. And, and some some of these people have just amazing market knowledge and the, uh, the availability of quality content out there um, that exists today isn't just you know the, the the great thing about social media is for the most part i think that people know how to weed through the bullshit and jonah's done a good job of doing that with the people he invites there's no you know pump and dump scammers there trying to you know drive up in their lambo with three rented girls on the side uh you know selling to telling you how great they can do it's it's real people it's a real event it's it's energetic and i'll be talking again um, about the uh, Anchored VWAP. I'm going to talk about a couple of uh, very specific strategies. And what I'll do is what I always do is to leave some actionable uh, trades so that uh, people can hopefully pay for the event with the trades that I present them. And as always, they'll have stops if they're wrong, but uh, presented with the exact reasons. And hopefully there'll be some good setups then. There always are, so I don't anticipate that being a problem. Perfect, Brian. That's great. And I think you're a spot on there with expanding this demographic is going to be a huge part of this. And, you know, hopefully people see the allure of Vegas as well, you know, make their way out there for a good time. Joni, you got something there? Nope. Nope. Okay. Sorry, I unmuted. Um, so it so wasn't oh, just the age, Jonah. I, I, I'm sorry, uh, Gav. It's, you know, there, there were a higher proportion of females than I've seen at, at other types of events. I'm a happily married man, and that's not why I'm mentioning that. But it, it's good to see a lot of females, you know, being involved in finance and taking a more active role. And if you are one of these younger guys, hey, who knows? Maybe you'll find your your next significant other, other there. Yeah, I know we have a Strat Sniper Sarah who will be on the space with us actually on Thursday. She is right. going to be coming. She said she booked her flight, and I, I think a lot of. I know she has a very large audience, and I definitely think she has a great female audience, and hopefully they'll be following her there. Right. Perfect. Okay. Uh, really, really good stuff there. That's super interesting. Um, any other tidbits into, uh, you know, what you'll be speaking about? Would it be different this time from last time? Um, well, I think last time I gave a more general overview 
of you know what the anchored volume weighted average price is and i don't want to go too much into you know the basics again instead i'm going to set up some specific swing trade examples i'm going to talk about time frame risk management and uh anticipatory analysis so uh, you know kind of like the tweets i've did just the last couple of days about CELH, about gold and um, whatever the other one was. Okay, very cool. And then same thing to yourself. We're, we're going to be in Vegas. Uh, will you be partaking in any festivities? Um, no, I'm not really much of a gambler. I, I, I don't feel like I can control risk the way I can in the market. So if I've got 10 grand, I'd say go put it into ALTO with a stop at 640. All right, note taken, note taken. Not financial advice, uh, do your own due diligence, but good stuff. I will continue to look at LTO. I know you've been, you've been liking that one. That was in our call uh, Thursday, and you still like it? I, I traded out of a bunch of it. I bought some back today. It's got a really tasty short position in it. Uh, those shorts look like they're about to get bent over pretty good, and uh, uh, it could be difficult for them to exit, I hope. Very cool. Very cool. Love it, Brian. Anything else you want to say? Nope. That's it. Looking forward to meeting a lot of new people and uh, reacquainting with others. Perfect. Okay. Let us swing back around to a uh, new face to the conference, and that'll be you. Is it Leif? Yes, that's right. How you doing? I'm living the dream. Thanks for being on here. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting to be on here. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, Jonas put on a, a what looks like an awesome event so far. Uh, excited to meet everybody. That's that's the main thing. We're all on finance, Twitter, and I get a lot out of it. So I'm excited to meet up with everybody in person. And then, you know, even even some of the lesser known ones too out there. I mean, I'm excited to meet uh, the people I follow and, and, and you know, just, just talk some shop there and put some faces to, to handles and stuff like that. And, um, you know, what I'm going to bring to the table is kind of, concepts really not talked about so much in books i mean this i, I don't want to like regurgitate things from books i look for more of the uh, aggressive type of risk management and you know, bring together a lot of those ideas and you know just uh, maybe hopefully convert a lot of growth traders to growth traders with you know, aggressive risk management you know behind it i mean there, there's ways to get in names so you don't have to kind of hold on the way down and just you know, all the little tricks to risking very little and sizing up uh, going into into trades and um, you know my influences are obviously come from you know O'Neill's work and you know a lot of the more popularized ideas from like Minervini and Dan Zanger and stuff like that I incorporate all that um, but you know basically we're, we're we're talking about risk risk happening fast and I'm going to speak about you know ways to protect your capital you know use something I call dynamic scaling and um, you know stop placement based on my read of the market condition um, you know, we're going to get into some candlestick methods and other things to to add little edges, you know, to your breakout trading and stuff. And I, and I work on this at championteamtrading.com. That's that's my platform. You know, that's why I just kind of strategize and, you know, work on perfecting the strategy and building a community of uh, traders and, you know, kind of elevate each other in, in a way there. And uh, looking forward to meeting all of you there and, you know, hopefully get a work at it with Jonah and uh, bring some pain over there. So. <laughs> You don't want to try to go pound for pound through this with this man. It makes for a bad Sunday morning. I'll try, man. I'll give it my all. I'll be crawling out of there, but I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give everything I got. And we're getting Richard in there too. I just told Richard he's working out with us. <laughs> he might not get any sleep. He's gonna be in the gym early. Richard looks like a 225 guy. <laughs> yeah, I can see him throwing up some reps. Oh, he, he's doing it. Yeah, maybe some maybe some table games. I'll convince you guys to to risk a little bit more. You know. We should we should have a two twenty five bench press competition. Oh yeah, can we do it be age adjusted? Of, jo Jonah, can we do it on top of an eight sleep bed? <laughs> <laughs> we gotta we gotta make it weight and age adjusted. Oh, I like that. I like that for the yeah the an anchored v v wap of the age. Yeah, yeah. We need there to normalize the return somehow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the old black. Anyway, I'll be playing blackjack somewhere if anybody wants to meet up. But uh, be happy to meet everybody that's, you know, talk to me on, on finance, Twitter, and all that. So I'm excited for it. Would you be able to give us a minute or two more about a little bit of background on yourself? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, I, I do champion team trade. I won the U.S. Investing Championship in 2019. That's a real money contest um, that's verified with statements and all that. So I, I made the most money that year against whoever I was competing against. And um, that was that was kind of a tricky year. Uh, you know, there's 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 been better years. And, you know, the idea is to get uh, as much money as you can in, in the market when it's working. And that's what I work on all the time. So swinging in and out of the market, um, you know, when the opportunity is right and uh, – you know, risk management is key, and that, that's kind of the, the topic I'm, I'm bringing. Uh, so ho hopefully some people get something out of that, and, you know, people add some risk management stuff they, they didn't have before. Very, very cool. Looking forward to that. And so you mentioned you're going to try to get everyone to game a little bit more. Uh, what is your specialty? Well, in 2000, I think it's 2009, I played blackjack for three weeks in Vegas. So, that, I mean, I, I can play blackjack a little bit. <laughs> You know, it's a, it's not the best odds, but you know, if you if you manage your risk, uh, you know, just size up when you're doing good, right, and down when you're when you suck. I mean, that's that's pretty much the key. Okay, it's uh, it's like you know, my specialty: buying high and selling low. You know, pull it pull it into the into the the world of poker and everything going on there. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to getting into it. Appreciate you making the time for the space, and looking forward to meeting up in Vegas. Yeah, All right. All right, I see we have Jake. If we can get him back up here. Jake, what's going on, man? What's up? It is your turn. If you want to give a minute or two on background on you, what you spoke about last year, and what you're looking forward to this year. Yeah. So um, I'm one of the uh, <clears throat> founding team members of TrendSpider. So um, for those that aren't familiar, TrendSpider, it's a technical analysis platform that's really kind of morphed into – a full market analysis platform. So a lot of different ways to utilize the platform. And so what I'm going to focus on in this particular presentation is is really kind of how you can optimize a lot of the inefficiencies in technical analysis, kind of starting from finding stocks to analyzing them to alerting yourself. Uh, so kind of going through that whole process of finding a stock and then making the actual trade stock, crypto, whatever you want to call it. So um yeah, it, really, really about making the whole process of, of analyzing and, and starting a, a trade and making it more efficient. And I haven't really written anything or have a presentation set up, but that will be the general idea of kind of what I focus on. And then last year, I focused on uh, visualizing supply and demand in different ways in the market. So using our raindrop charts, uh, VWAP, uh, anchored VWAP. Uh, volume by price, those types of things. So um, this time we'll be a little more focused on um, inefficiencies in the market rather than visualizing things. Okay, inefficiencies in the market, very interesting. Uh, so are we getting Koob's flying out there with you at the table or what's happening? Uh, no, I think it's just going to be me. Okay. Um, so you got to start him young, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's just going to be me this education, time. that is. Yeah, 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 he's, uh, he's got his little economics books that uh, one day he'll get to, but no, it's just going to be me. Um, probably three or four other people from TrendSpider as well. I think Dan's going to be doing uh, some some type of presentation, so um, yeah, I'm excited. I'll, I'm turning 30 uh, two or three days after the conference ends, so I'll definitely be celebrating that. Uh, while I'm there, and Brian, you make me feel so young, saying I'm uh, 27. So thank you for that. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm excited. Uh, plan on gambling quite a bit. I do like to gamble, and um, uh, I personally like blackjack, but I also like craps if you have a good table. So you know, you could go to a table and have you know the 85 year old guy betting uh, every penny he has left to his name and getting mad that you're throwing dice off the table, or you can get a get a good table together and uh you know i'm hoping i can find eight other people at the conference to uh, get a fun table to go uh play some craps with sounds good jonah are we putting we're trying to put together something on the betting side uh well we're doing the so so friday night during the cocktail party we're also going to be having the poker tournament Okay, so that's uh, we've got that officially set up. Uh, yeah, it's like it's ninety percent confirmed right now. Uh, we're just trying to make sure we have enough space in, like it's 
I mean, it's confusing. I can't really explain it right now, but like we, we were trying to figure out how much space we need to host a certain number of people, you know, for the cocktail party while having all the sponsor booths still set up. So as long as we have enough space to, to do the poker tournament, we're definitely going to do it. Um, what we're going to do is once, like probably two weeks out from the event, we're going to email everyone that bought a ticket and ask them if they want to be in the poker tournament. There's no cost to play, so we're not allowed to charge for it, and we're not allowed to do cash prizes. We can do prizes. They just can't be cash prizes. So we can have, like, gift certificates and all sorts of other Shares stuff. Shares of that, stock. Yeah, that's, that might even work. Um, so it'll be free to play, but we just need to we need a head count ahead of time so we know how many tables to set up, how many dealers to have, how many pit bosses to have. Like, they're they're pretty strict about all that stuff. So... We'll do our best to get a head count. I mean, I'm guessing if we have 600 people at the event, we'll probably have 100 people playing poker. Uh, and we're going to open up the air walls so you'll be able to stand around the tables and watch people play if you want. So it'll be it'll be entertaining at the very least. Okay. Well, definitely looking forward to that. Um, also, I saw we got Aaron, who's in the crowd, the blonde broker, who I'm sure will be there. Aaron, uh, do you want to give any uh, minute or two on what you're looking forward to with this? Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm super excited for the turnout for this conference. We had a blast at our very first Fintwit conference in Orlando. Um, I will not be playing poker because I have no idea how to play. So I'll probably be walking around handing y'all drinks. But um, yeah, I'm super excited. And I think the weather's going to be great in May. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, it'll definitely be a great time. I'm looking forward to it as well. Um, okay. Uh, so Jonah, I think those were all the people that we had kind of planned to speak. Uh, so I think we've run through everyone with initial thoughts. Is there any like one question or two you want to throw out and get everyone's thoughts on or anything else, you know, any other details that maybe you want to run through kind of what ticket prices are right now, yeah. just like general details for those who have been in here listening. Yep. So like I said earlier, the website is fintwit2022.com. Uh, that will, that will forward to the Benzinga page. So I've partnered with Benzinga on this event. They have like a six or seven person events team uh, that helps with, you know, the logistics, the marketing, the AV, the recording, everything else that goes into it. it you know, this is just too large of an event for me to do by myself. So the, so far, they've been great partners. So if you end up on the Benzinga site, uh, don't get scared away. That That is the, the page with all the details. So if you go to that page, you'll see the speakers, you'll see the sponsors, You'll see the link to purchase the tickets or technically it's like Eventbrite. It's it's embedded into the website. So the ticket prices right now are three twenty seven dollars per person. That's for the two days. And that also includes three full sit-down meals and the cocktail party. So we're doing like a high-end buffet lunch both days. And we're doing the buffet breakfast on Saturday morning. And we're doing the cocktail party Friday night with a ton of food and drinks that's all included in the ticket price plus entry to all of the speakers, you know, all of the sessions, all of the panels and the recording afterwards, because if we're going to have 30 people speaking over the two days, obviously you're not going to get to listen to all of them because you're only going to get to pick one room at a time, but we're going to do a recording of everything and we'll post that online for anyone that purchased a ticket. So, you know, if you only get to listen to eight or 10 speakers over the two days, you know, after the event, when you get that recording, you'll be able to go back and listen to anybody that you want to. Um, and then hotels. So this is a big one. Uh, we have 350 rooms blocked off at Aria uh, for that Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. We got a really nice discount on prices. So back when I when I booked all of this like three months ago, I got a 30% discount all off of the rates at that time. Now the rates are up like 50, 60, 70% since, I don't know, late December. Uh, so now the ticket prices are, are not ticket prices. Now the room rates that you get from our room block are like 60% cheaper than what you would have to pay online at Expedia, booking, et cetera. So if you're coming to this event, uh, the sooner you book those those rooms, the better. Because once we once we fill up the 350 person room block, and like I said, we're expecting five or six hundred people at this event. 
once we fill up the 350, I have no idea if this hotel is going to give us any more rooms at a discounted rate. If they give us more rooms, it's definitely not going to be at the same rate as these first 350. It would probably be a higher price, but it's also more likely that they don't give us any rooms and then you'll just have to stay at a different hotel. Now, it's Vegas, so there's like 50 hotels on the Strip and half of them probably have two or 3,000 rooms each. So, like, don't get scared off. I mean, if our room block fills up, you'll just be, at, you know, you can stay at, I don't know, the Venetian, the Wynn, the, the Bellagio. Like, they're all right there. I mean, they're all just a, you know, three or four minute walk away probably. So, if you want to stay at Aria, you know, where we're having the conference, the sooner you book the rooms, the better. But, you know, if you end up waiting to the last minute, you know, you'll probably just have to stay at a different property. So, uh, but go to the website, buy your tickets, 327. That includes everything. Uh, prices will go up to 377 in two and a half weeks. So we're raising the price $50 every three weeks. So you're welcome to wait as long as you want to purchase your tickets, but prices will continue to go up. Just, just so you know. Awesome, Jonah. Well, I think that covers it pretty well as to what everyone has to look forward to, what the dates are. Uh, I recommend if you're going to buy flights, buy them quick because they are getting expensive. I just booked mine yesterday. So recommend with that. And uh, Jonah, so I know that there's stuff going on really, you know, Friday, Saturday are the main days. Uh, for people that come in early, what's going on Thursday and is there anything on Sunday? Uh, so I haven't planned anything officially on Thursday night. I mean, we'll probably end up doing something. My guess is we'll just find a, you know, one of the restaurants at the hotel and do some sort of a little cocktail party in there or just a meet and greet with everybody. Uh, not sure if we'll actually do anything more than that. I mean, if any of the other attendees or sponsors want to get together and, and plan something, I'm happy to promote it and share it, but I'm not sure I want to get involved with, with anything else. Uh, Sunday, no, I don't think we're going to plan anything. I just think that's going to be a day for people to do whatever they want. I'm sure a lot of people will end up flying home on Sunday, and then the rest of us will just kind of hang around and do some drinking and relaxing, I hope. And then I Saturday night, LA, so I am so looking. Anybody going out there? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, Saturday night's obviously a pretty big night in Vegas. All the big clubs are going to have their DJs and performers. I've talked to two clubs so far. So I've talked to XS at the Win, and I've talked to Jewel at uh, Aria. So I've gotten VIP prices, like table prices for both of them. Uh, the chain smokers are actually going to be at XS. Uh, that's the one at the Win. They'll be there on Saturday, May 14th. But the prices are freaking ridiculous. So I asked what it would cost to get like a, a VIP section for 25 to 50 people. And at, um, at the win that night, it would cost 25 to $50,000. <laughs> so $1,000 a person. Uh, like the way it usually works, I think that's your beverage minimum. So like you're on the hook for spending at least that much money. Um, the prices at Jewel, which is inside Aria, which is the one that I'm more likely to go with, those prices are way more reasonable. It's, um, I think it's 250 or $300 a person. So I'm probably going to do a section of like 20 people. Uh, so if anybody's interested in sharing that section with me, let me know as soon as possible so I can start to, you know, jot some names down. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking to probably do it at Jewel because I want to stay at the Aria, you know, where our rooms are, that we don't have to worry about walking anywhere, getting Ubers, blah, blah, blah. So that's just, that's what I'm planning on Saturday night. I'm sure there's going to be a, a million things going on. So if you're not into clubs and you would rather go to the, the magic shows or the Celine Dion stuff or Britney Spears, I don't know who's performing, but I mean, this is Vegas, so you'll find something to do. Perfect. Okay. And I think that, I think that covers it pretty well. Anything else you want to cover today? I'm good. All righty then. Uh, make sure to head uh, to the website again. That is just fintwit2022.com. I believe we'll reroute you. It'll be to the Benzinga website. You can check out all the speakers, sponsors, and more on that. And then we're going to be doing some more spaces uh, throughout. Uh, but this one's recorded. So we have this. I also have this recorded for YouTube and for Spotify, Jonah, so we can share it out from there too. Okay. Thanks, man, for hosting. I appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you to the speakers for coming on. Looking forward to chatting again soon. Take care, everybody. And if you want more spaces, I'll be back on in an hour and a half for more investment talk. 
All right. Thanks, Take guys. Care, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.